Hey folks, well, here we are, new day. Um, cold, rainy day, so a good day to be in the shop and uh, rip this dozer apart. So, we'll hopefully get this thing uh, torn down and uh, see if we can figure out what's uh, going on with the engine, why she's stuck, and make some headway. Well, here we are, we're in. And both cylinders were um, full of uh, ATF and acetone or ATF and diesel, I'm not sure which one I did second, but you can see the front one is definitely still full, so I'm gonna hazard to guess that this one's the one that's set up tight. So I'll have to get this uh, fluid out of here and see what we're dealing with. Well, there you have it. This bore is nasty looking. Nasty. Let me get my flashlight out of the shot here, but not ideal. So, luckily we're about halfway through the stroke here, so that's favorable for giving us some room to try to push that piston down. So we'll exercise a little percussive maintenance here and see if we can break it loose. Well, after a whole lot of percussive maintenance, that much percussive maintenance, my arm is really tired and we got uh, that front piston down at the bottom of the bore bore was very scaly. Um, clean the scale out of the bore with a you know abrasive wheel. Um, the bore does not look great. Yeah ideally you know we should pull this engine apart and bore it, hone it, sleeve it, whatever. But we're not going to do that. Um, I'm going to run this through the stroke a few times um, get it, you know, fairly loose so it'll spin over with the starter motor and then I'll uh, run a hone down both of the cylinders with the piston at bottom dead center and uh, call it good. May put a valve job on the head, I haven't decided yet. Um, and we'll get it back together and uh, see if it'll run and see how much oil it burns. <laughs> oh, one step forward, keep chugging along here. Well, it's barring over a little bit easier now, <clears throat> so put the starter motor back in it. Um, it's got a 12-volt battery in it. This is a 6-volt system, so got the generator unhooked here. I don't know if the generator is any good, but we want to protect it just in case. So, well, I'll see what she does here. That battery's dead. We uh, may need to go get another one. Okay, so we got a battery in at this time that I'm pretty sure isn't dead. So we'll give this another try here. Here That's a beautiful thing. So before we get into the valves on this thing, um, <clears throat> just going to take a quick side note. I just got this uh, 
broken off bolt out of the head. It was really in there. Um, wouldn't move with the vice grips at all. Um, and with an iron head, there was concern with um, cracking the head with putting heat on it. So I figured this might be a little useful tidbit. I've done this several times successfully. Um, it's the corrosion in the threads that this gets all bound up on. So if you uh, have a situation like this and you're concerned about putting heat to it, um, what I do oftentimes is uh, just flatten out the, uh, the top of the broken off stump and just wrap on it several times. Obviously not a full freaking swing, but uh, just tap on it for quite a while with, uh, with a small ball-peen hammer and it'll break up the corrosion between the threads and then put your vice grips back on it and keep working at it to see if it'll come out and eventually that that usually works it just takes a lot of patience um, but that came out of there without any heat so onward and upward into the valves now this cylinder head is pretty rough I uh, I don't know whether it's got a uh, water jacket leaking into the exhaust port um, but the corrosion is pretty substantial the uh, keepers are all stuck into the retainers and the valve stems um, so we're going to try to break this one loose this one appears to be the worst and I don't want to damage or bend anything so I've got a, uh, a shim under the head of the valve to hold it up and we're going to put some uh, some light pressure on it and then tap around it to see if we can get it to break loose are corroded into the valve stem. I need a screwdriver for this. Slow and steady. And here's our valve. <clears throat> Not looking the greatest, but uh, again, it's hard to say what the situation was here. Whether it got water from outside or whether the jacket's leaking, but we'll get it cleaned up and measure the wear. And it looks like there's a decent amount of margin left, so. The seat um, does not look that spectacular. Come on, stop that. Definitely got some pitting going on, but not sure if it's carbon caked in there or what the situation is just yet. So again, we'll get that cleaned up and slap the valve in there and lap it in and see what it looks like.
adjusted. Look at that. For the record, WK40 cylinder head and an M cylinder head about the same thickness. In case you ever need to know. For anybody that wants to know. No, nope, not quite. I go a little more. Oh, excuse me. Well, that's only because we cut the valve down. <laughs> So one of the things that we noticed when we were grinding the valves on this thing is that the intake valves were worn extremely unevenly off to one side. And really there's only one thing that contributes to this is uh, a bad bearing pattern between your uh, rocker arm tip and the valve stem. Um, if you've got bad parallelism between the, the two uh, bearing surfaces, um, it'll basically cock the valve off to one side when it's opening and closing and cause it to wear away at one side of the seat. So sure enough, took a look at those rocker arm tips and they are hammered. Absolutely hammered. Probably 32nd inch deep groove in each of the tips of them. <coughs> so these are clearly going to have to be reconditioned. Um, they probably should be replaced, but we're not going to do that. Um, and I don't have a uh, apparatus to grind rocker arm tips. So we're going to embrace our inner redneck engineer machinist and get a little creative here because we have a grinding wheel off a bench grinder. And we've got a nice surface ground shoulder bolt. And uh, we're going to make it work. We're going to turn our mill into a little makeshift jig grinder of sorts. Hopefully it works. So we got the cylinder head bolts here and uh, they are quite nasty as you can see. We're going to clean these up on the wire wheel quick uh, before we put the head back on this thing and put it together. Um, this is just a side note that uh, um, this is one area where uh, having your threads and your uh, washer surface clean really is imperative. Um, obviously your cylinder head bolts have a torque specification and that torque specification is directly correlated to the clamp load that these bolts are producing um, when they're torqued down. And believe it or not, that clamp load can vary wildly uh, depending on the coefficient of friction in the threads and in the washer surface. Um, sometimes they'll even specify uh, whether your threads should be lubricated or dry because it, it will realize a substantial difference in the clamp load that the bolt produces. Um, so for something like this, uh, you want to make sure that your threads are, are shiny clean and your washer surfaces are shiny clean. That way, uh, when you torque all of your head bolts down, you get an even clamp load distribution across your entire gasket surface, which is obviously really important with a head gasket. So we'll get this uh, cleaned up times the rest of them and uh, get this thing put together. Here we 
we go, head torquing. Um, this is, uh, I suppose, you know, like lug nut torquing. There is a, uh, a right way and a wrong way. Um, thing to keep in mind that most po people don't realize is that everything is flexy. I don't care how rigid it looks like, it's flexy. Um, and the big thing with your head gasket is you want even compression all the way across the entire gasket surface. Um, so the preferred method typically for head bolts is you start in the center and you do a spiral pattern outwards towards the, uh, the outside until you get to the last bolts. And you keep doing that pattern repeatedly, um, inching up on your, your torques back until you reach the final torque. Um, <clears throat> some people have different um, preferences for uh, what interval to, uh, to go in, you know, whether it's 25 pound increments or 50 pound increments or what have you. Um, but uh, I'm going to start with uh, 50 pounds and then probably break down to 25 pound increments. Um, the spec for these bolts is 105, so I'll probably do, you know, 50, 75 or 80, and then, and then 105. Um, you don't want to do really uh, less than, uh, you know, a, a 20 pound increment or something like that because um, what will happen is you'll end up <coughs> flirting with the amount of torque that it requires to break the static friction between the uh, washer surface of the bolt and the, the surface that it's engaging and then you're going to end up with an inaccurate torque. So we'll start with uh, the center here and uh, we'll inch up on it. I'm going to snug them all first before I go to that first increment and uh, this is just kind of by hand. sure to do uh, when you've got one of these old engines apart and I've already done it on the oil galley on the head here um, is blow out the uh, oil supply line here for your uh, for your rockers and whatnot I suspect that that might be a contributor to all the wear that we were seeing on, on uh, the valve stems and the rocker arms and whatnot so these get plugged with coke and whatnot and uh, <clears throat> you just take some compressed air and uh, blow the line out make sure it's not plugged Now you can hear we got flow into the pan, you know, bubbling in the oil, so we're good. Um, I, like I said, I did the same thing with the galley for the head, and I got all kinds of nasty crud out of that, so that one was definitely plugged. Um, just good practice, you know, you want to make sure you got oil flow to your, uh, your top end, your valve train.
Well folks, I'd say uh, all in all that was a pretty successful first run. Started right up. A um, little bit of uh, tuning issues that, you know, I didn't even clean the carb, so who knows, we'll get her dialed in, but uh, definitely moving oil with the valve train now. I made a god awful mess all over everything, but that was why I left the valve cover off. Make sure we're moving oil. Um, ran it until, uh, you know, my gut said it was hot enough and uh, shut her down. We'll let it cool down and uh, probably tomorrow we'll recheck the valve lash on it, make sure the valve lash is still good and button the rest of it up. Okay folks, so uh, during the intermission there, um, readjusted the valve lash, uh, got those rockers dialed back in again, um, changed the oil, cleaned the sludge out of the bottom of the pan, uh, changed the oil filter, cleaned the sludge out of the bottom of the filter housing, it was quite disgusting. Um, dumped a little more fuel in it, and uh, now that you know we can a little bit more safely run this for a little longer, uh, we're going to fire it back up again, and uh, I don't know if you recall from the first video, but I did suspect that uh, this thing had clutch issues, so we'll probably uh, stick it in gear and at least see if it'll do anything or rock back and forth. I don't know. We'll see what we got.